Morning peeps, good morning everyone, how's everyone doing? Hopefully you guys are all doing well. Don't forget if you're new to the channel, like, share, subscribe. All right, a couple of quick things. Firstly, thank you to everyone for jumping on the live yesterday. We don't do enough of those. Um, I'm gonna try and do a live like once a week and then live watch alongs for the big fight. So the next one will probably be uh, Liam Smith, Eubank 2. And then if I don't go to the States, it will be Canelo, Jamel Charlo. And then we'll have a look at the schedule. But yeah, thank you so much to everyone for jumping on. Uh, the final road to 175 pound, the weight cut video comes out today at six o'clock. Please give it a watch. Um, it was such a crazy journey. Um, and I think the weight cut was probably, from a visual standpoint, probably the best episode yet. So if you can give that a watch, that comes out at six o'clock. All right, let's talk about this fight that happened uh, late last night in Poland. Alexander Usyk uh, dropping Daniel Dubois twice. Uh, en route to a ninth round stoppage. In my preview videos, I did say that I think Alexander Usyk will get a stoppage between eight and 12 or a wide points decision. And there were times when I felt like at the end of the seventh that the eighth round stoppage was coming. Obviously, that doesn't tell the full story of the fight. Now we're gonna have to go straight to the most controversial moment and that's that fifth round, what was called a low blow knockdown Alexander Usyk out for five minutes, right? I mean, really hurt, down, referee giving him all the time in the world to get back up because the referee deemed it a low blow. Me watching it live, I said, that's not a low blow, that's a great body shot. And it's clearly something that they had been working on. I said this in the build up to it. As soon as Don Charles put that body bag on, you can see that him and the team were working on, and maybe this is having James Ali Bashir, who obviously was part of the uh, Usyk camp for a number of years, Maybe that's a weakness that they know, that they've spotted AJ hurt Usyk to the body. And Daniel Dubois was clearly targeting the body. And I thought at the time, it was a perfect body shot that poleaxed Usyk. Now, there has been back and forth between boxers. It's weird. Sometimes I feel like, okay, maybe I just don't know the rules. But then boxers are going online and going at each other as well. I see Carl Frampton says that was a clean body shot, whereas... Uh, Liam Smith has said, no, 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 it wasn't a good body shot. It was illegal. Tony Bellew says it was illegal as well. So boxers are confused. I've seen people that write about the sports and like Mike Coppinger said, no, 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 that was a low blow. Others have said, no, it was illegal. I don't know where I stand on it. Um, you could, it looked at the time that it was a low blow. When you see it frame by frame, again, watching it live fast speed, it looks like it was perfect. Looked like it was perfect. Now, the question is, if it was perfect and the referee started counting, would Usyk have got up at 10? I don't know. He looked fucked. I don't know. Some say, yeah, if the referee said, okay, count, he would have got up at 10. Maybe, right? Usyk's a warrior. He's fighting in kind of his backyard in front of his people. I think he would have got up. But who knows? All we know is I think Daniel Dubois landed a perfect body shot. Daniel Dubois right now could be waking up as the unified heavyweight champion of the world. Frank Warren right now could be waking up as the man that literally holds every single belt in the heavyweight division. Bear in mind, Tyson Fury's got the WBC. That wasn't the case. Now, some have called boxing, and I've seen uh, Mauricio Suleiman do this, and I, I don't know how this would have worked out, but I've seen Mauricio Suleiman refer to TV monitors when a controversial decision happens. He's done it. I remember him doing it against... Who was it? Charlie Edwards versus Julio Cesar Martinez. When Julio Cesar Martinez hit Charlie Edwards, when Charlie Edwards was on the floor, he went and overruled it and I think called it a no contest or a win for Charlie Edwards. I can't remember, but he referred to the screens. He did it. I've seen him do it. He's done it for a couple of fights. I can't remember off the top of my head now, but I've seen him refer to screens. Why can't someone very quickly... Again, Usyk was down for five minutes there. Why can't you very quickly look at the screens? Just look at the screens, slow it down frame by frame, low blow or not. Now, the issue is, if they did look at the screens and it was deemed perfect, I still don't think Dubois would have got the victory because they would have said, okay, that's a perfect shot, Usyk, get up. Do, do you know what I mean? I don't know what you would have done in that situation. So it's a difficult one. But ultimately, Daniel Dubois is the one that loses out ultimately he loses out. If I'm Dubois in that situation, I think what I do is I scream at the ref. And this is where maybe Dubois' sort of demeanor, which is very, you know, very relaxed, isn't it? Just very cool. Um, if he was 
a top draw fighter, I think a top draw fighter is going mental there and saying, no, that's a perfect body shot. What you, and again, I don't know what that does, but I think he would have done that. Instead, he went to the corner and almost just carried on like nothing happened. Carried on like nothing happened. I know in the aftermath, he said like he was robbed, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't know what you do there. But look, it, it's a difficult one. And it's a difficult one. It's obviously a difficult one because you've got some boxers saying it was legal. Some boxers saying it was illegal. Some boxing writers saying illegal. Some boxing writers saying legal. So everyone seems to be confused with it. I guess the biggest question is, if it was a legal blow, would Usyk have got up? I am going to say yes. I think Usyk would have got up. I think Usyk decided to take the five minutes out of experience because the referee said low. And he's like, well, fuck it then. I'm going to take the five minutes. Why wouldn't you? If you're hurt, why would you not take the five minutes? You'd be stupid not to. That's smart. That's experience. Um, look, ultimately though, when Usyk got up, Usyk started to go through the gears a bit. I thought Dubois should have jumped on Usyk a bit more when Usyk got up. Clearly he's hurt. Regardless if it was low or not, he's hurt. Jump on him. And I don't think Dubois did that enough. And then um, Usyk, I think from six to seven onwards, started to really sort of show what he's got. Seven, Daniel was hurt. Eight, Daniel was hurt towards the end of eight. And then nine, we know what happened. I, I will start from round one, though, very quickly. I thought Dubois boxed a good fight. I did. I think um, I said I don't think the the the, the status or the, the atmosphere would get to Dubois. And it, it didn't seem to get to him. He looked vicious and his punches looked really fast and razor sharp. Um, he made Usyk, I've seen Usyk fight for a while now and Usyk normally starts quite slow, tries to figure you out. Um, I think because Dubois started so fast, Usyk had to start fast. And because of that, I think Usyk was getting his second win, second breath by around four or five. Honestly, I think he was like, whoa, this, this kid's quite sharp. Um, Daniel Dubois had no fear going in the pocket. Um, I think Daniel Dubois maybe should have thrown the jab a bit more, but I think it was quite awkward, obviously fighting the best southpaw on the planet. Um, and Daniel Dubois got tagged a couple of times, but it didn't affect him getting tagged. He still went into the danger zone, still tried to land these big shots. We didn't really see the big the big right hand land any time. Usyk's jab was good. Usyk's southpaw left was very, very good as well. But I wanted Daniel to be a bit more aggressive. But I thought Daniel boxed a good fight. I thought that's probably the best that we've seen Daniel Dubois. Bear in mind who he's fighting against. My one, my one sort of thing that I want to uh, stick to beat Daniel Dubois with is the two knockdowns. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I, I remember that the first knockdown was so sort of inconspicuous. I thought, is he hurt his leg? Because his leg kind of just went. And I don't know if it was because the, the floor was a bit slippery because the rain was blowing into the ring. I was like, oh, is he hurt his leg? So he's not really hurt. But then... He, he went down. I was like, oh, okay. But he got up. I was like, okay, cool. He's got up. Um, the second knockdown, don't get me wrong. It was a ramrod jab. It was a great jab, by the way. Very Marvin Hagler-esque, if you watch it, where Marvin Hagler used to jump into the jab. Usyk jumped into that jab. So it definitely hurt. There's no two ways about it. But I felt like, I don't know. I would never, ever, ever call Daniel Dubois a quitter. Or I'd never call any boxer a quitter. But I felt like um, he could have got up. I felt like he could have got up. I felt like, oh, is he just tired? Or has he just decided, no. That, that's, it felt like he, to me, has just decided, no. That's what it looked like to me because, it, it, yes, it was a power shot. And, and yes, I get it, you're exhausted. And, but this is a world heavyweight title shot. You've hurt Usyk. This wasn't one-way traffic where you've been busted. up. Like, I get it, if he's been beaten up for seven or eight rounds and he's getting outlanded and he's, you know, he's getting fucked up, I get it. He's hurt Usyk a couple of times. Usyk's been afraid of those big power shots. He's bullied Usyk a couple of times. There was a couple of times we put Usyk to the ropes. He didn't really let go, but I was like, gee, okay, you're doing well here. You can clearly see, and he could hear the breathing. Usyk's getting tired. So I was thinking, I wouldn't say Usyk's there for the taken, but that was no way in hell vintage Usyk. Come on, do something, Dubois. Didn't do it. Didn't do it. And um, I don't know. Even after the fight, did you, have you guys seen it when Usyk goes to Dubois and it's almost like he's telling him, he's like, come on, Daniel, you're young. This is boxing. It's almost like he's giving him the pep talk. Like, what's wrong? Like, come on. Like that, that demeanor that he's got, like as much as I'm like, okay, that's just his personality. Fuck that. You you need a bit more in you. You need a, you need that, that aggression in you. Like that, that demeanor is, it's weird. It's weird. I'll be honest with you. I can't, I, I'm not liking it. I'm not liking it anymore especially in the big fights. Like I need him to, 
Just find something. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But look, ultimately, it was a big ask. 25 years of age. Um, again, that he doesn't have much amateur experience. His biggest win is Trevor Bryan. I don't know what his biggest win is. So to go from that to where he went to yesterday, pound for pound, top three, top four, it's a big ask. Um, back to Usyk very quickly. Obviously, look, we want to see the Fury fight. Usyk slowed down dramatically yesterday, like a lot. He slowed down a lot. And, and as, I was, as I was watching, I was thinking, that's not the same Usyk that fought AJ. And, and it's not. He's a year older. A year older. His activity has not been as good. Um, one fight a year. Let me have a quick... I keep saying that. Let's have a quick look at that very quickly. Am I right in that? Because I feel like he's not active at all, Usyk. And sometimes that can show itself. And I think it showed itself a bit yesterday. Um, yeah, one fight a year. I, I, like, so... Chaz Witherspoon was his only fight in 2019. Chizora was his only fight in 2020. AJ only fight in 2021. AJ only fight in 2022. And this one, and we're, we're in August, only fight in 2023. One fight a year is just not enough. It's, it's, it's not enough. There's no two ways. You, you can shake it and bake it however you want. It's not enough. When you compare that to when he was active, like, I mean, 2015. 2015 alone, three fights. Uh, 2016, two fights. 2017, two fights. 2018, three fights. Do, do you know what I mean? So look at that activity. And twenty. And, and what's he doing now? And that, by the way, was the best Usyk, the cruiserweight Usyk. Don't worry, the heavyweight Usyk's very fantastic. But that cruiserweight Usyk, because he was stuck in a tournament, was just so busy. So busy, active, active, active. This guy now, just not active. Not active enough. And I feel like it showed a bit yesterday. But look, congratulations to him. Hopefully, we get to see uh, the undisputed fight. Who knows what will happen. Um, as for Daniel Dubois, I read that Frank Warren is trying to um, get a no contest. I don't know why people do that. What does it mean? What's the point? It's such a weird thing, no contest. What does it, what does it actually mean? Daniel Dubois lost. Does it mean that he doesn't fall back into the rankings, that he gets another crack? Maybe that's the only benefit of doing a no contest in that fight. Um, but we'll see what happens. Um, again, don't forget, guys, six o'clock, 175 pound weight cut video is up. Uh, Carl Frampton believes Daniel Dubois landed a legal shot. Liam Smith disagrees. I mentioned that already. Uh, Frank Warren on Usyk Dubois. He's going to lobby the WBA to declare it a no contest. Uh, Jared Anderson um, beats down, stops Redenko in the fifth run. I don't think Redenko is better than Charles Martin. I think it's actually a slip backwards, um, but he's active. He's staying busy. Uh, which is very, very good. I haven't seen this. I've seen the low blow, but I've not seen um, I've not seen the whole fight. And that is uh, F.A. Jagba uh, got the disqualif disqualification win over Kosobutsky. Uh, numerous low blows. I saw the last low blow taking the piss right to disqualify him. Uh, Shakur Stevenson, Frank Martin, vacant title fight ordered by the WBC. I mentioned this, didn't I, a couple of days ago. Um, this is going to happen. Good fight. I like this. Frank Martin will lose. He's not as good as Shakur, but it's a good fight for the WBC lightweight title. Uh, I like it a lot. Um, and that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, very, very quick video. That's my thoughts. I still don't know if it was low or not low. By the way, very quickly, last one. Adam Hamed, Prince Nassim Hamed's son, came in co-main event. I don't like that, by the way. Don't like that. Far too much pressure. But anyway, got uh, a first round stoppage victory. That guy that he was fighting... That's a disgrace. I'll be honest with you. I don't know. Obviously, he's been told just lose. Just go in there and lose in the first minute because that was pathetic. I don't know what you get from that. Honestly, I don't know what you get from that. I don't know. But anyway, uh, good luck to him. Um, it was a bit awkward, him fighting like his dad, but it is what it is. That's what they all do. He's grown up watching him. Um, we're going to end on this one. I keep saying last one. Hamza Shiraz um, got the victory in two rounds against a, fellow, against a Ukrainian, basically in Ukraine, really. Um, Hamza Shiraz is a big problem at 160 because he's massive. He's massive. He has pop. Um, I would love to know what he rehydrates to. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting to see where Hamza Shiraz goes. It has to be Denzel Bentley next. That's a great fight. Anyway, I got to go. Um, I'm going to be gone for a week or so, guys. When I get back, we will do loads of videos. I will obviously take my phone and my tripod with me. And if we can do videos out in New York, if anything happens, I'll do a video. But if not, I'm going to take a well-earned, rested break. And I will see you guys uh, next week. Peace and love.